Welcome to this Jordan's Fireworks video. In this video we're going to deal with Roman candles. Roman candles are probably the most popular style of firework available in the United Kingdom. Uh, they come in a variety of sizes and we've just brought a few here to show you the, the, the different types of Roman candles that they're around but the, the principle is basically the same for all of them. The two main types of Roman candles you get, you either get a, a tall, thin Roman candle like this, or you get a, a, a short, dumpy Roman candle like this. The short, dumpy type uh, are known by the generic name of cakes because of the colourful wrapping that they have around them. It makes them look like a, a celebration, like a birthday cake. Uh, they're also known as barrages, and the bigger ones are known as single ignitions but the principle is the same with all of them there. Now, on the instructions, you'll find varying uh, methods that, that manufacturers uh, will, will suggest in setting up their fireworks. Um, manufacturers are constrained by a set of phrases that they have to use, and this can be a little bit confusing to the general public. So we're going to show you um, some of the, the ways to set up a Roman candle and you can make your own decision as to which one best applies to the Roman candles that you have and also the ground that you have got to let the fireworks off on. Now a, a tall thin Roman candle like this, this one particular one says insert a bright in soft ground uh, and if you have an area of soft ground like we do here then it's nice and easy to push into the ground there and the Roman candle's not going to fall over. The important thing with all of these Roman candles is they cannot fall over and it's really you have to use common sense as the best way to achieve that in, in, to a certain extent. But that one's just pushed upright in, certain, in soft ground there. Um, we could do the same with this one as well. Um, a lot of the fireworks actually have a berry to line with them and there again you could insert that firework in, in soft ground. Some of them will just say place upright on flat ground. Uh, we'll take a, a Roman candle and you can just place it on a, a, if you've got a hard surface that you're firing off, it'll just say place upright on, on, on flat ground. Now obviously something like this one could place that upright on, on flat ground. Uh, the key wording with all of the Roman candles is ensure the firework cannot fall over. Now with placing a, a firework just on flat ground like that, that's great, but we've not actually ensured that it can't fall over. A very popular way that people ensure that type of firework can't fall over is to put some bricks around it. And if we just put four bricks around that firework, that will hold it nice and steady, and that will ensure that it can't fall over. Now there again, this system works well with fireworks of a certain size, but if you get a firework that's really quite tall, say for instance that tall, the system wouldn't work because the firework wouldn't be supported well enough there. Another very popular way of ensuring this type of firework can't fall over is to attach it to a wooden stake. I've got a little wooden stake here. I'm going to drive this into the ground. Okay, so he's good and solid there, and we would put the firework up against the wooden stake. Now you notice that I never have the, uh, the, the stake above the top of the firework. And then with some tape, secure the firework. There again, that makes sure that the firework is good and secure and can't fall over. And this method works with an awful lot of fireworks. Obviously, if you're working off a uh, tarmac or concrete surface, then you can't drive a stake into the ground and you've got to look at a way that you can utilize things like bricks and concrete blocks around the fireworks to hold them steady there. If you've got an area of soft ground, then obviously you can put, bury the fireworks in the soft ground there. Now, all of these systems you know, will work to support fireworks, but what you do need to take into consideration is where the fuse is in each consideration. We get asked a lot of times 
um, you know, how to find the fuses on the fireworks. Let's go through some of the more obvious ones here. This one is extremely simple, the fuse is on the top and it's just got a little bit of sellotape securing the fuse down. With this one all we would need to do is just slip through the sellotape and bend the fuse up like that. On this firework here there is an orange fuse cover on it. You'd peel this orange fuse cover off and there again the fuse is just there underneath the fuse cover. Now you can see a problem straight away with the stake and this type of firework. If you put this type of firework against the stake and wrapped tape around it you would have taped the fuse to the side of the firework as well and hidden it. So when using that type of method with this type of firework where the fuse is on the side and not on the top you must make sure that you have released the fuse first and you probably put a, a band of tape around the top a band of tape around the bottom there rather than one over the, the top of the fuse. There's a few more here, this one here, this one's in fact got a cellophane wrapping on it as well and a fuse cover and all you would do on this is you would just slit through the cellophane wrapping Peel that back, and there's the, the fuse underneath. Peel that back, and there's our fuse underneath there. Doesn't matter about ripping the top, we're going to come on to that later. Now, some of the fireworks actually come in a box. Absolute fireworks manufacture several large barrage, barrages like this, and people will ask us, do I need to take the firework out of the box? In some cases yes, in some cases no. This is one of the ones where you don't. We'll open up the lid here. And again you'll see the fuse is just under a bit of tape there. And you just peel the tape back and there's our fuse underneath there. So you can see the, the principle is really the, the same for you know, from a large firework like that down to a small firework like that principle of finding the fuse and lighting is going to be the same. With the fireworks that are fired into the box, to stop the lid coming over the top of the firework while it's going, I would suggest actually cutting the flaps off. Some people take them down, but even then there's a risk of it, it uh, a gust of wind could catch it, the tape could come undone. So if you've cut the flaps off, then there's no way that the fuse uh, and the firework is going to get covered then uh, later on. Some of the fireworks will come in special packaging. And, uh, this packaging is called pyromesh packaging. And this is another question we get asked about them. Do I need to take the pyromesh packaging off? Do I need to put it back on? Now, you can see in this one here, a pretty pair of gardening gloves as well. So we've got quite a a formidable set of interior packaging there. You certainly want to be doing all of this well beforehand, not on the night by torchlight at the bottom of your field. And we'll lift the firework. Now, the packaging, get him out here. You don't in fact need wire cutters to get into these pyromesh packaging these days, in fact they made it a lot more simple. You can in fact just cut through the banding straps with a good sharp pair of scissors. And then you lift the wire cage off. The wire cage has nothing to do with the actual firing of the firework, it's purely for the storage and transportation of the firework. And then once we've got inside, we're back to really a variation on a theme. As we've already seen, we've got a large box covered in wrapping paper and there we've got our cover over the fuse there and you would just peel that down and you'd find your fuse underneath there. There again you could uh, you could put you know, good concrete blocks around this, you could insert it in soft ground or you could attach it to a stake there. One of the things with inserting fireworks where the fuse is on the, the side here, inserting them in soft ground, make sure you're not burying the fuse. Always leave like a little gap in the soil there. If you're putting blocks around it, make sure that you're leaving a gap in the, the blocks so you can actually light it. Uh, 
and likewise when you're attaching it to a stake make sure you've not taped the fuse down. Fireworks where the fuse is actually on the top like the one we saw here make it obviously a lot easier uh, to attach to stakes or to bury in the ground or even putting blocks around them there. So just reiterating the most important thing is the firework cannot fall over. Probably the most asked question we get is do I need to take the wrapping paper off the fireworks? The answer in most cases is no. We've already seen the one here where you actually open the flaps up on this box here so obviously you need to take that part of the packaging away there but on a typical uh, cake type firework here all of this will all disappear when the firework fires. Here's like Blue Peter one we did earlier as you can see it fires all the paper off the top there even if the cellophane it will fire through all of that. There is one exception to that and that's this type of firework. This is a, a mini missile barrage fire with hundreds of mini missiles in them. These come from uh, uh, 100 shots up to 2,000 shots. This is just a small one with just 200 on here and you can actually see on this remove this plastic lid before lighting. And so what we do on here is we just actually cut through the cellophane get into him here. There we go. He's come off that these little missiles actually need to fire out through the fireworks so you need to take that top off in this case and there again the fuse is under the wrapper here and there we go you would peel this down and here's your fuse this green bit here that's what you're going to be lighting on them there so back to the exactly the same principle of either blocks around it inserting soft ground attached to a stake if you're attaching it to the stake make sure that the, the fuse is clear there this type of firework will fire their shots uh, in either vertically, for instance this one here, all the tubes are vertical in here, this fires all its shots vertically. Some of them are in a fan shape. And this one is obviously quite obviously in a fan shape there. Uh, and they will have on them this side facing spectators. Now, you may want to check with your supplier because sometimes there have been labelling errors on these. So just check that the, the uh, manufacturer has put the, the instructions on the correct side of the firework. I have seen a firework come in from China with a sticker on here that said this side pointing towards spectators. If you pointed this side towards the spectators, the results would be catastrophic. So, if you've got a fan-shaped firework, this is quite obviously a fan-shaped firework. This one here, not quite so obvious that it's a fan-shaped firework. Some of the tubes in here fire vertically and some fire in a fan shape. There again, there's a little label on the end here. This ends towards spectators here. So you put it on the ground there and that would be the direction and the spectators would then see the fireworks fire up in a fan shape across the sky. I think that takes care of all of the questions we've asked, so just recapping, make sure this type of firework can't fall over. You've either got soft ground, blocks around the firework, or a stake in the ground, and you need to use the most appropriate method for the ground you have got and the size of the firework there. As we've discussed, there's no point putting little blocks around a firework like that, it wouldn't hold its thing there. Um, you must make sure that it can't fall over. The if the firework is loose and wobbly before you light it, it is not going to get any sturdier after you light it. We've discussed how whether you need to remove the labelling on the firework here, and as I say, in most cases it will fire through all the labelling apart from the mini missile cakes, which you do need to take the plastic lid off the top of those, and on the big absolute cakes where you actually need to open up the lid and cut the flaps off on them. And then you just need to find the fusing on the firework and you'll either find it sellotaped down, sometimes it just has a little bit of 
sellotape over it, over the fuse, fuse there. Sometimes there's actually you know, quite a definite you know, fuse cover that you'll peel off there to get to the fuse. Um, but in all cases, uh, you know, just slip through the cellophane, bend the fuse up so it's nice and easy to find there. Now you can light the fireworks in various ways. To be honest, I think the preferred method we have is the port fire firework lighters. These actually burn with a flame. You just light the end of this and as soon as you touch the firework fuse, it lights the firework fuse. These are great because they work in all sorts of weather, the Stone Age technology, and so uh, they're not reliant on piazzo crystals and flints and things like that there. So they're, they're great. And you just light that with a match. Um, these burn for around about three to four minutes each. So make sure when you're getting your fireworks that you've got plenty of this type of lighter. I think that takes care of everything here. If you have any questions, then please contact us and we'll be only too glad to give you the best advice we can. Thanks for watching this Jordan's fireworks video.